In the leafy suburb of Ivanhoe, northeast of Melbourne, is the garden of part-time florist and full-time gardener, Petrina Burrell. Her cottage garden is a celebration of colour and a home to thousands of bulbs, hundreds of roses, peonies and self-seeding annuals. How big is the garden? So the actual block is 690, but I only work on probably the back third of it. Mm. So it's not too large. And I've actually started digging into the lawns. I needed more garden beds. So when Happy wasn't home, I took up the lawn. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I put lots of um, spring tulips through there. How many bulbs would you plant in a year? Oh, it's getting worse and worse. Um, this year I put in 8,500. Oh, get on. <laughs> yes. And what? What sort? Oh, so there were ranunculi, the beautiful Italian Renaissance, those big double frilly ones and all different varieties of tulips that will flower mids and lates, earlies and then daffodils and anemones and it's just a riot. It's just a joy, a joy of colour. How would you best describe your garden? Well, I would say it's an English garden. I love flowers and I just plant what I love. So I, I look for fragrance, I look for joy, I look for colour, I look for all the old fashioned flowers, like the real, real flowers. This is a very nice flowery spot right in the full sun. Isn't she beautiful? Mm. So mm. we've got lots of foxgloves, delphiniums, and then of course the roses through the middle. And the alliums, look at those, yeah. marvellous bulb. And your pots are really good, filled often just with self-sown things yes. like the lobelia. Yes, the lobelia, the violas, I think they, where they land and fall, that's where they grow, yeah. which I just and love. cornflowers. Yes, and they're all just self-sown and I just let them fall on the path or grow through the trees. I always like the look of a loose garden, do you know what I mean? Where sort of the aquilegias just sort of flow out yes. and you've done that. Yes, definitely. And I think again that comes back to working with nature. So this is self-sown, she put herself here and then free-flowing and she's just happy, shining, just for everyone to see. People may not know them, they're columbines, aren't they? Or... Granny's bonnets. Yes. Which is just adorable. <laughs> you can just imagine the little hats there. They're beautiful, aren't yeah. they? And the different colours, I think they're lovely. This one here is just spectacular. Yeah, the two-tone variety. And again, she just put herself there, just beautiful, and comes up every year. Then I cut her down to the bottom and then the right time, up she comes. Do you think flowers bring something out in people? Definitely, definitely. I think they just bring joy and that connection that you can have with flowers. My beautiful mother, she taught us to love the little things in life. Mm. Every night we'd sit down and she'd pick flowers to go on the table, centre of the table, and we'd talk about the flowers. That's a really lovely thing to do because then yeah. kids do mm. become more aware of what's around them. Yeah, so true, yeah. so true. And it doesn't matter how small or how mm. large. I noticed a cute little thing over here. In yeah. The yeah, that's a little viola and she just found their way there. If things find their way where little spots, I leave them. I think, good on you, you found your way there. When I was little, I said in my, little, my diary, when I grow up, I want to be a florist. And that's what I said in my grade six diary. And so um, when you were 16 and you could do work experience, then I went down to the local florist and I started cleaning buckets. Oh. And then that turned into a Saturday job and that... <sighs> took off from there, but it was always casual. Yes. And I never wanted to be a full-time florist because I never wanted to curse a flower. You know, I never... To I, curse a to flower. To curse a flower to... because I know when it gets tough in floristry, yes. you know, you, there's a lot of pressure. There's a whole side to floristry that people don't yes. see. And I never wanted to, you know, be upset with the flower. I always yeah. just wanted the love there for them. They're my friends. I love them. Tell me about your job as an airline hostess. Ah, oh, yes. I love travelling mm. and I love the gardens around the world. So I thought, OK, well how can I see the gardens around the world? I'll become an international flight attendant. So I did. I went off and I lived in Dubai. Mm. And so then I would plan my trips to find the gardens around the world. So, for example, um, Kew Gardens in London, mm. I'd go there. I became a member because I'd fly back every month, sometimes twice a month, and just walk around. And, and then places like, for example, Munich, there's always lilac in flower in spring on the nature strips mm. and just growing wild in strange places. So I take my snips everywhere I go and chop, 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 and I take it back on the plane. And they used to call me flower girl because I was always bringing flowers back from overseas and you were allowed to bring anything to Dubai. And I'd have my trolley dolly bag and it's just full no. of flowers. <laughs> I'd God. take them in, I'd pop them up the front of the plane because it was often quiet up there and they'd sit there in their first class and I'd treat them well and fill up their vase, keep them there along the flight. You've obviously got a wide selection of plants here. Mm. What mm. would be your favourite at this time of the year? At this time of the year, the roses. Mm. The roses. I truly love roses.
and I like the meandering nature of this one. Oh. She is my pride and joy. Yes. She is everything. So her name is Lamarck and she's an old fashioned rambling rose. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's just so flowery, isn't it? She's just a joy and I wrap my house in roses. <laughs> this beautiful one here, this is Mary Rose. And I love her for a fragrance. She has a beautiful myrrh fragrance. Ah. Just exquisite. This is Abraham. Can't forget you. Beautiful Abraham Derby. Beautiful fragrance. Really sweet smelling. And the colours are peach through to pink. Big full heads. And oh, This is David Austin, isn't it? Yeah, all David Austin. He's bred them so beautifully, yeah. hasn't he? This is Sharifa. And she's known for her beautiful perfume. Oh, wow. Yeah, mm. really potent. She's beautiful. She is quite tall. I didn't realise how tall she'd be when I popped her in. And here we have Light Peeled Angel. And she's a beautiful climber, David Austin climber. Really big cups, very generous. Often two or three heads on her stems. And she's fabulous. She just keeps giving. Just fantastic lot of petals in each. And then over here we have Jude the Obscure. I love Jude. It's full cups. Isn't that beautiful? Yes. And then there's William Norris. That's another climber. So I'm hoping all the way up he'll go. Yeah. A massive amount of flowers. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, just a joy. So there's a lot of romance about your garden. Yes. I love that my garden evokes feelings memories, you know, it's a place for everyone. It's dreamy, it's daydreamy. I want to bring the joy of gardening back and the joy of flowers back. I think people think it's time consuming to have a garden like this, and it's actually not. You just put them in, talk to them, watch them grow. You know, it's not as much work as people think.